Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, hanging out with me, that kind of stuff. I re really appreciate it. I'm still having a lot of fun making Luminar 4 videos, and I got another one for you today. I'm finally, and I mean finally, doing the Tone Curve video. I've talked about it in previous videos. I said in a video, hey, hold me to it. Um, and some of you are like, hey, Jim, I'm looking forward to this video. When's it coming? Right now. Um, okay, let's get into it. So here's a photo, and if you're not familiar with Tone Curve, let me show you on the let me just collapse all this. If you're on the Essentials tab, which is this first one, if you click on Light, you have all these sliders, and then you have Advanced Settings, and down here you have Whites, Blacks, and then you have this funny graph. And this funny graph is um, Curves or Tone Curve. It's known as a couple of different things. I think most people call it the Tone Curve. Um, if you're new to photography and have not used a Tone Curve before, it's kind of scary, I'll be honest. Um, I spent a long time, the first several years of my digital photography life or whatever, and I was like, I don't know what that is, and I don't want to touch it, because every time I do, things just go haywire. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Get over it, Jim. And so I did, and I uh, started playing with it, and I came to realize it's basically the most powerful filter there is. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty amazing. It gives you awesome control over highlights, shadows, midtones, contrast, and color. Um, it doesn't sharpen a photo, um, but it does kind of everything else, right? So it's powerful. It's really worth knowing. Now, do I use it on every photo? No, I don't. Um, can you use it on every photo? Absolutely. And in fact, I'm sure that there are photographers who are almost purist, um, I would say, and they will just go into Lightroom or Photoshop and use the tone curve, and that could be about it. I mean, it's really powerful. So let me explain it and um, kind of show you how it works. So there's basically four little uh, buttons across here. There's this kind of gray one and then a red one, a green one, and a blue. Red, green, blue, RGB, right? Primary colors that are in your images. This first one is about the tones. And so this is where I would normally start. And down here you've got this line. And in the background of that line you have a histogram. And that histogram is a visual representation of the distribution of light, right? It mirrors the histogram that's up here, and we'll show you, um, or I'll show you that here in a minute. Now, if you're looking at it, you got this line here, and you've got these buttons down below. So this bottom left corner and this, uh, this little button, that's really the shadows, and in this upper right corner, that's the highlights. So highlights are, they're big and bright. Shadows are deep and dark and low, so think of it that way. Um, and also the shadows are on the left, highlights are on the right, just like in a histogram, right? So pretty simple and straightforward stuff. So let me just show you what happens when you start moving this, um, these little things around. So this top one is highlights, and so if I go to the left, you will see the highlights start getting brighter and brighter and brighter. Now that looks terrible, and this is not how to, you know, how is Jim gonna edit the photo, this is just me showing you stuff. So everything's gonna look terrible, but I'm just gonna show you what works or how it works, I should say. So I've made the highlights really kind of look terrible, right? Um, and that's what that is. Now if I drag it this way, I start darkening the highlights. You can see that. You'll also notice this histogram here is mirroring the one up there, and everything is heading to the left, which is basically the dark side of the histogram. So I'm going to hit reset, and we're back to normal. Now if I go to the bottom left, I've got shadows. So if I want to lift the shadows, I can just pick that up and lift it. And once again, uh, because I'm lifting shadows, I'm losing contrast, because contrast is the difference between the brighter and the darker parts, and the higher contrast is the greater difference. This is losing contrast because I'm losing shadow, so the image is getting kind of faded, so that's how vintage looks are made often, um, or faded looks, like the matte look. It employs kind of that sort of approach, which is lift the shadows, lose the contrast, flatten out the image, and that's what I'm doing here. Also, because it's getting brighter and wider, the histogram is headed to the right. So this histogram here is pretty much bunched up to the right because it's headed to the highlights. Everything's getting brighter. Same with the histogram up here. They will mirror each other. Um, so the opposite, of course, is true. There's my base image, and if I drag the shadows to the right, I'm deepening the shadows. I'm just kind of crushing those blacks and just making it really dark. That's kind of a silhouette, right? And uh, actually not a terribly bad look, kind of interesting. Not really my look, but kind of fun. Um, but the, the histogram is flattening out. It's getting darker. And so what I've done is basically just crush the shadows there. And I'm going to hit reset. Now there's also midtones. Um, and so midtones, 
Um, you see these three little dots on the bottom? Left one is shadows, the middle one is midtones, and the one on the right is highlights. So you can move this this way, and that's doing the same thing as what I just did. You can see the little ball here that's on the graph is moving in concert with the one I'm sliding. Same with the highlights one. I can go left. The thing is, you can't pull it down like I did here. I can't do that from this bottom slider. So this bottom slider, they say it's basically about setting the midpoint. Um, for me, it's an option to come in here and use this little um, button for midtones, right? So um, if I drag it to the right, I'm kind of darkening the midtones, and that's a nice way to add a little bit of contrast to the image without really crushing the shadows and making it really black like I did before. Consequently, if I go to the left with this, I'm kind of bumping it up. You'll see this. This is the tone curve itself. That tone curve line is arcing out or upward. It's getting brighter. Um, the histogram's kind of doing the same thing, etc. So I can take uh, midtones and start going that way. I'm going to hit reset. So here's the thing. What most people do with the tone curve is they'll drop a point here and they'll drop a point there. And I call these anchor points. You might call them control points. I don't know. To me, they anchor this line because it allows me to do something like this where I might want to lift the, the highlights a little bit and maybe pull the shadows down a little bit. And that creates a higher contrast image. It's not over the top, but I think it looks pretty nice. And that is kind of a little bit of an S shape on the line. And people generally call that an S curve. And so people say, yeah, I was in the, in the you know, curves tool or tone curve or whatever, and I just put a simple S curve. That's what they're talking about. Basically, that's your S curve. It's basically just a way to add contrast because you're darkening the shadows and lifting the highlights a little bit. And so you're a little bit brighter here, a little bit darker there. Contrast is the difference between dark and light. So that is basically how that goes. Okay, now I've reset that and I'm back. And so if you'll notice, uh, like let's say I want to go over here and take the highlights up. You'll notice as I do that, let's say I wanted to just blow out this sky for some reason, this whole line starts arcing up kind of in unison. And so what people will often do is say, all right, I'm going to take the highlights, but I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put an anchor point there and there. And I think you can use like 10, right? So um, you can get these kind of right back kind of where they were, but let's say you want to really drag that one up. Well, if you do that, you start going this way. You can see that because I've anchored this, the rest of the line isn't arcing upward as dramatically, right? But it basically allows you to isolate uh, smaller and smaller portions of the photo to mess with the tones in. So that's probably not a great example of a line, but the point is that if you drop multiple points, um, instead of just one, it's going to give you uh, the ability to control more discrete sections of the photo. And so something else to keep in mind. Okay, so that is the basics of the tone curve, but we still have these three other dots, red, green, and blue. Now those correspond to the color channels, right? So if you go over here to red, um, let's say we're in highlights. Um, here's the thing to think about. Before I go any further, I want to show you this color wheel. I've talked about this before on the color enhancer video when I talked about um, the color balance sliders in color enhancer. Color balance, as I said there, is one of my favorite things, super powerful, but it takes into account this idea, which is which colors are cousins and which colors are opposite of each other. I say cousins if they sit kind of next to each other. So uh, the red sits kind of close to yellow and magenta because they're all in that kind of family. The green is kind of close to yellow and cyan, same thing, they're kind of related. And blue kind of sits here, and of course there's overlap, etc. But the point of this is which colors are opposite of which colors, because the opposite colors are complementary. So yellow and blue go well together. Green and magenta go well together. Red and cyan go well together because they're opposite each other on the color wheel. So if you come back over here to red, um, if you go up here in the highlights, remember this upper right is the highlights. If I start dragging the highlights to the left, I'm adding red. And that's because I'm on the red color channel and I'm in highlights and I'm dragging it up right? Now, if I do the opposite and start coming this way, um, you know what I'm getting? It's not red anymore. It's the opposite of red. It's cyan. You see, it sits on the opposite side of that color wheel. Whoops, I didn't mean to zoom in. Uh, and so I've just taken the highlights and gotten away from the red, which means I'm making them cyan. Now, I don't want to do that here. It's an example, again, of what you can do. 
And that's why this is so powerful because in addition to on this little kind of grayish white tab, you can do all the tones and contrast. Then you can come over here with colors and start doing similar things with colors. In shadows, if I wanna um, make more red in my shadows, which I don't wanna do here, but um, there I go. And if I wanna go cyan in the shadows, I can go like that. And so what I think looks kinda of cool is something like this, where you might go red in the highlights and cyan in the shadows. And that's kind of a bicolor toning sort of thing. And that's basically what bicolor toning is is doing. It's two colors, right? And you're toning them. Um, in this case, I'm going complementary colors. I had the red and the cyan, playing them off of each other, red in the highlights, cyan in the shadows. Makes for an interesting image. But that's something that you can do. And you can also just drop an S-curve here. Same kind of thing as what I did um, just a second ago, but I'm doing it using the S curve instead of just dragging the, the top or bottom, right? So, and these represent the tonal ranges that vary between highlights and shadows. And so, again, lots of experimentation. There's no way to cover everything that you could do to an image because every image is different. The point is experiment, have fun. Don't be afraid of it. There's a lot you can do. Let's jump over to green. Now, remember, green is opposite magenta. So in highlights, if I wanted to go green, which please don't ever do that. Uh, I have a thing against that. Um, I don't like green highlights. Maybe you do. I'm sorry if you do. Um, I don't mean to insult your taste. But um, green highlights uh, is, is that way. And if you want the opposite of green, if you kind of want uh, more of that magenta, you come that way in highlights. Same thing over here with shadows. You want green shadows, you go up. You want that, you go that way, right? You can also drag the uh, the midtones that way or that way. So you can do that on all three of these color sliders. Again, experiment, have fun. Every photo is different. And let's look at blue real quick. Let me show you here. Blue and yellow are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So as you would expect, if I wanna go more blue in the highlights, which would be maybe something you would typically do on a blue sky shot like this, then you go that way. And if you wanna go away from them in the highlights, you go to the yellow, you drag it down. Same thing or opposite thing technically in the shadows, and that is you go up here to get more blue in the shadows and the opposite of blue is yellow. So you could go like that and go like that and have a strange kind of bi-color toning, blue and gold kind of look. Um, not my look, not what I would do here. My preference is what I did on the red, which was that uh, kind of simple uh, S-curve here to give it a little bit of that um, kind of you know red and cyan look, but that's just because I like it. The point is each of these three colors, uh, or tabs I call them, uh, gives you control over that color. You can drop multiple of these anchor points or control points and manipulate colors that way uh, for each of these plus over here. So lots of power, lots of control. Simply amazing to be honest. I love the Curves tool. And now that I'm sitting here playing with it, I'm like, God, I need to use it more. It's so much power. You know, it gives you so much power in, in your fingertips. And um, even though, you know, maybe prior to using it, you might have been intimidated like I was. I mean, I was intimidated for years. So like, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I was kind of afraid to use it. I was like, what the hell is that gonna do to my photo? And I was kind of afraid to touch it like I was gonna break something. You're not gonna break anything. You're not gonna mess anything up. It's fun. Get in there, just jack around, move the sliders around. Use what I've talked about in this video as a little bit of a basis, um, but experiment. Every photo is different. Go have fun with it. But that is a, a uh, high-level overview of the Curves tool. I'll probably come back and talk about light and go through all of these, but I wanted to cover Curves first simply because I think it deserves its own video. And so when I do the light video, I'll just say, and when I get to Curves, go see this video, and I'll point to this video. So that's how it works, my friends. I do appreciate you watching. I hope it's helpful. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I've got a lot more coming. And I would love to hear your uh, comments and feedback about this video. Give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you like what I'm pre uh, creating here and producing. And that's it, my friends. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. And adios.